watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops presented by Zales. And this is the ACC on ESPN. And we welcome you to the banks of the Ohio River where tonight we've got a great non-conference battle in the finale of the Gotham Classic between the UAlbany Great Danes and the Louisville Cardinals. And good evening, everybody, alongside Dino Gaudio, Jordan Burnfield with you. Glad to have you for this game, which should be really, really good inside the KFC Young Center. Dino, this Louisville team comes in having won four straight games. They're playing very well at 8-2. and two. But Albany is 11-2, and two, off to their best start in Division I in school history. So if Louisville thinks it's going to have an easy game tonight, I don't think so. Jordan, the biggest mistake you can ever make as a team is not giving the appropriate respect to an opponent. Louisville can't do that tonight because Albany has been to three of the last five NCAA tournaments. They have a veteran team. They start three seniors, two juniors, and they are led by a lion of a leader in Joe Cremo. This is a big guard that can post up. We'll see Will Brown post his kid up tonight. But what he does extremely well is he's an outstanding three-point shooter, 53% from behind the three-point line. And because he shoots it so well, it creates driving lanes for him. The question for Albany is can they score inside because Louisville leads the nation in block shots and this guy right here Hanas Mahmoud is a big reason why he provides resistance at the rim leads the ACC in block shots because his timing and jumping ability is so outstanding and then you can play through him in the post on offense he's a willing and able passer a terrific offensive rebounder and I'll tell you what big reason why Louisville could win this league this year with that big fella on the interior. He's going to be fun to watch tonight, and if Louisville gets the win tonight, they will win the Gotham Classic. It's coming up next inside the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. Stay with us. The Heisman Playmaker versus the SEC's top dog. The defending champs versus the avenging tide. Oklahoma, Georgia at 5 and Clemson, Alabama at 845. New Year's Day on ESPN. Now, JR, everyone knows why you're called X Factor. Yeah, I'm unpredictable. But not everyone knows why you're called JR. It stands for Jim. Jump Shot Ron. No. Oh, I'm sorry, Jump Shot Ronald. It stands for Junior. Really? Junior, I mean, I get it, but you don't want to jazz that up? No. Some, something more fun? All right, I guess it's Junior. <sighs> Raiders Eagles in the Monday Night Football season finale on Christmas night. Coach, what could be better than this? We get to unwrap the best present of all. I got your gun. You get mine, all right? Let's go. Let's go. We're on three. One, two, three. Two of the most passionate fan bases in the game. I cannot wait to see the atmosphere in Philly. It's going to be absolutely electric. Monday Night Football, Raiders, Eagles, Monday, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Are you ready? And we welcome you back to the KFC Yum Center here in Louisville, Kentucky with Dino Gaudio, Jordan Burnfield. As you take a look at the Albany Great Danes coming in at 11-2 on the season. And now we take a look at their starting lineup for tonight's game. And the Albany Great Danes coming in at 4-2 and two on the road this season. And you see Nichols and Cremo are their guards in the backcourt. Campbell and Charles. Travis Charles, a really efficient shooter in the forward position. And then Greg Steyer is their man in the middle. But he is just six foot seven, and so a size disadvantage for Albany tonight. For Louisville, they have an extremely tall team. And Quentin Snyder in the backcourt along with B.J. King, who is dealing with a little bit of a flu bug, but is playing tonight. Deng Adele and Ray Spaulding are the forwards with Honest Mahmood as that center in the middle who makes things oh so difficult for those opponents that try to get into the lane. The opening tip set to go between Greg Steyer and Ray Spaulding and it is won by the Great Danes and they will bring it across first. 
Now you're going to see Louisville extending defensively. Usually they'll switch ball screens, but they're not going to do that this evening because they're so concerned with the rebounding of Albany. This is Travis Charles pulls up for the jumper, knocks it down. Charles, the most efficient shooter on this Great Danes team, third on the team in scoring, and he gets Albany on the board. And that's one of the things that Albany can do to drive Mahmoud away from the basket is have Charles take that 15, 17-foot jump shot, gets Mahmoud away from the cup. Now Louisville attacking with its first possession of the game. V.J. King driving in. Now the cross-court feed, Dang Adele goes up over Campbell, can't get it to go, but a foul. Devontae Campbell picking up his first personal foul. And there's Will Brown, the head coach at UAlbany. He's been there 17 years now, 271 wins there. He's been to five NCAA tournaments, including three in a row between 13 and 15. And in the America East, Albany is one of the toughest teams every single year. Dang Adele knocks down the free throw. And for Louisville, there's David Padgett in his first year after naming named the active head coach for this team in late September. And 8-2 and two start for young David Padgett, third youngest coach in the country. He's off to a pretty good start, I'd say. He's off to a very good start. And I talked to David at ACC Media Day and took over in a similar situation, if you will. Jordan when coach Prosser passed away and I became the head coach at Wake Forest where you got to give your predecessor the necessary respect but I told David you got to make this team your own in your own image and he's done that and now this is David Nichols a preseason All-America East candidate and that one knocked out of bounds by Mahmoud. You mentioned it in the open. This guy is just so tough to deal with on the interior. He, he really is. So now we got side out of bounds with a short clock here with five seconds to go. And we saw Albany work on this in the shoot around today. You'll see the guy under the basket right there, Nichols, come all the way up through the lane to get the basketball. Number 13 in the purple. It'll be Travis Charles to inbound. Graduate student out of Brooklyn, New York. And they, they like to run Nichols right up the middle of the lane into a quick ball screen. Now, you want the ball in his hands because with a short clock, you want to have guys that are able to create for themselves. David Nichols can do that. So they call a foul on Devontae Campbell. That was the stoppage there just to make sure. And now with four to shoot. Albany has it. Nichols, Charles at the buzzer. That one's short. And it's saved in by Albany. Charles again. And this time it comes down in the arms of Louisville. Well, he missed it because he rushed the shot. He had plenty of time to let it go because when he let it, when he shot it, he boy, he ran right after it. He knew it was off. And now a foul coming up again against Albany. That will go against Greg Steyer, his first personal foul. In this Gotham Classic, Albany lost to Memphis, but otherwise has won their games. Louisville has been unbeaten after beating Memphis on Saturday in New York. And now Dang Adele, the jumper good. Wow. Well, what he can do against this Albany team is get to the mid-range, and he elevates in his size, negates the shot block by uh, Albany. Oh, Albany back across the floor. Charles up over Spalding, and that one was blocked, but it's saved by Albany. And then stepping on the line out of bounds is Steyer. One thing that Will Brown, the head coach of the Great Danes, told us before the game, Dino, was that because of the size advantage that Louisville has, these guys know that they're going to get some shots blocked, but it's about weathering that and still being able to get a good shot. It really is, and their shot selection is so important, making sure they're, they're taking makeable shots, especially with the size differential. And there's the size differential coming through as Mahmoud able to lay it in. When you see pick and roll action and you're the guy on the screener, you have to make sure when that guy rolls, he doesn't get below you so that what we saw right there doesn't happen. The lob to the basket. Nichols got his defender up into the lane. A nice floater from David Nichols. 
And I love the shot fake. I think it's the best fake in the game because it lifts the defense, it makes them unathletic, and then you can go by like David Nichols did on the possession. And now Mahmoud backing down on Steyer. Did not have the touch. Steyer isn't as big as any of the Louisville guys, but you know what? He might be stronger than all of them. 6'7", 255, but definitely has put on a lot of muscle since coming to Albany. It's like a tight end out there. <laughs> he is. And now a steal by Spalding, trying to save it, stepped on the line. Well, turnovers are bad, but when you have turnovers against an athletic team, they make you pay on the other end. Albany very fortunate right there. And again, short clock for Albany with 10 seconds. Ten to shoot for the Great Danes. They've been a very good offensive team, averaging almost 79 points per game. A lot of efficiency to their offense as Cremo gets into the lane, and that's a race by Mahmoud. Now King underneath to Spalding for the dunk. Spalding from King. Well, you know what? King had a good shot. Spalding had a better one. Very unselfish basketball. And Louisville doubling up Albany on both ends playing well here. Well, Mahmoud is a great shot blocker, especially from the help side, which ignites the break. Very good pass by V.J. King. David Padgett, first year coach of this Louisville program, trying to keep things normal after a very abnormal beginning of the season for this Cardinals club. And, and Jordan, you, you know what, when he, when he took over the program for the first 10, 10 days or two weeks, he was doing it by himself, he never had a staff. One of the managers was helping him coach the basketball team and then he picked up some great guys. The guy to his immediate left right there, Trent Johnson, a great coach, 36 years experience, Nevada, Stanford, LSU, TCU, Greg Paulus, the great guard from Duke who I coached against, and then RJ Evans as well. So David has put together a very good staff for Louisville. Impressive, no doubt. And these guys try to coach Louisville to its potential, which is obviously great. This is a three try from Nichols, too strong. King the rebound. What Louisville did switch that ball screen right there, and Mahmoud runs the floor well in the post up. Could not finish the rebound, Spalding, and a whistle. Jump ball, it'll be kept with Louisville. And now an inbound coming in underneath their own hoop. Adele to King who's posting up. Right, Ahmad Clark who just checked in. That's too strong. Mahmoud able to grab the rebound. Boy is he tough. Snyder now to King in the corner. Off on the three and Steyer comes up with it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think Steyer realized that when he boxed Mahmoud out, he got to drive him almost to the three-point line. That guy is so long. Honest Mahmoud, second on the team in rebounding and fourth in the nation in shot blocking. Matchup zone by Louisville. And now Clark, a three from the wing, and that will not go out of bounds. And it brings us to a timeout on the floor. Louisville doubling up Albany here early. Honest Mahmoud making plays on both ends of the floor to lead the Cardinals. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever. And Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles. As we welcome you back to the KFC Yum Center and take a look at this Gotham Classic, the five-team event. And so far, all the teams playing against each other, but Albany's only loss came against Memphis, and Louisville was able to beat Memphis on Saturday at Madison Square Garden by an 81-72 score. And the Cardinals come in having won four straight. Louisville shot lights out against Memphis. 14 made threes. And Quinn Snyder has been playing really well, and he was outstanding, the MVP of that game. Basket made and a foul coming up. And so Travis Charles will get to the line with a chance for a three-point play after the foul on Spalding. Let's take a look at the Cardinals, who are really getting their offense going. 
And David Padgett's team finding a way to space the floor a little bit better. And Greg Paul, as you mentioned him earlier on this new staff for Louisville, was looking at the tape recently and said, guys, we got to get out on the floor more. As Spalding goes up for an alley-oop but gets fouled. And they've really found more offensive flow after spacing the floor a little better. Well, you know what? It's like a quarterback in football. When your quarterback's playing well, they're spaced out better. Quint Snyder, when your point guard plays well, you play better. And he has just been outstanding the last few games. The last four games for Quint Snyder, 16 points a game, 9 for 16 from behind the three-point line, and he has 14 assists as well. So spacing, Jordan, is all about can we shoot the ball? Like You, you, you can be at midcourt in, in Looks like it's good spacing, and guys will be in the lane because you can't shoot. But when you shoot the ball well, that helps your spacing, and that's what Louisville's done as of late. And so Spalding able to knock down one out of two. You take a look at how Albany has done in this Scotland Classic so far. And other than the loss to Memphis, they were able to eke out a win over Siena, which we know is a big rivalry game between yeah. those two schools <laughs> up in... Central New York, and then Bryant, an easy win for them. When Albany and Siena get together, that's always a tough one. Yeah, that's a good call. Yep, Charles trying to set the screen and whistled for the foul. And, and you know what? I would tell my guards, and I was fortunate to co coach good point guards, from Chris Paul to Jeff Teague to Ismail Smith, who's now with the Pistons. As a point guard, don't run the big into a foul. In other words, let him get set before you use that ball screen. And what happened there, the guard came off too quick illegal screen by the big guy and that, that that's mostly on the point guard on that possession and Travis Charles now with two fouls so he goes to the bench Will Brown the head coach of the Great Danes doesn't like to keep guys in when they have two fouls in the first half this is Mahmoud and that's short and tipped around but Nichols comes up with it for the Great Danes a good physical wall up defensively on Mahmoud Nichols thought about the three, but instead he'll drive in on the big guy. Cremo to the basket, off target, and the rebound to Malik Williams, the freshman. And now a steal, but a trap. How about Clark? Got the theft, but then couldn't handle the ball. Well, it's a great hustle play by Ahmad Clark out of the Matha Catholic. Played for uh, legendary coach Mike Jones there. And he, when he was a senior at the Matha, how about the guy that was playing small forward for him, some guy named Markel Fultz? I go, <laughs> you were the point guard and Markel was? He goes, hey, coach, he played some power forward too for us. That's when you know the guy is really good when he can play every <laughs> position on the court and be the best player yes. in every position. And now Dang Adele, a three try. That's off target. Rebound comes down to Alex Foster. Albany setting up their offense. And Adele gets called for the foul. If you're going to try for that steal, you got to run through the passing lane, not through the offensive player. If you're going to try to get that steal, you need to be up the line a little bit. So. The deflection, the run out, and you could finish at the other end. Well, Dang Adele will check out for a bit. Ryan McMahon into the game. 30 and white for Louisville. Had a broken rib, which he suffered in practice in October, and returned on the ninth against Indiana. Had six points against Memphis on Saturday. This guy will just come in and drain three pointers. Nichols, high off glass. No, and Foster can't get the roll either. And now a foul. Boy, Foster has to finish that right there. When the big fella Mahmoud came over to block the shot, it created the avenue for him to get to the basket. He has to, he has to finish that. So here's the drive. Watch Mahmoud helping. Yeah, that should have been two for you, Albany, right there. Greg Steyer now two fouls. Mahmoud didn't get it to go the way he wanted to, but it'll look like an alley-oop in the score sheet. Well, it takes five guys to guard the ball screen. It's not just the two defenders that are involved in it. And when Mahmoud, when Mahmoud rolled to the basket, you need to have other guys in the lane helping out on that roll. So 
Here's the ball screen. There's the show by Foster. Yeah, you should have six legs, three guys in the lane right there helping on that roll. Does he get credit for a dunk on that one? His hands were on the rim. Did he really dunk it? I'm saying no. <laughs> I agree. I think it's a layup. Five to shoot now for Albany. Three to shoot. Cremo lost the handle and a violation. I'll tell you, the matchup zone by Louisville has been problematic for Albany. And so far, Albany struggling with the fouls. They've already committed five, and that was something that Coach Will Brown said, we got to keep our foul totals low, especially early in the game against a team that's this physical and this big. Well, when, when you're struggling to score the ball, you have to find a way to get easy shots. One is in transition off the break. The other is with second shot opportunities. McMahon the miss and the rebound, Foster. Underneath, Foster got it to go, and the foul. So Alex Foster, graduate student from Plainfield, Illinois, will have a chance for a three-point play. Well, well, that's what he does, the transfer from Texas Tech, who went to Bradley and now at Albany. He is a power post who scores around the rim. And cannot get the free throw and the rebound to Jordan Mora, one of the freshmen for Louisville off the bench. McMahon. You're seeing Albany go underneath all of those dribble handoffs and ball screens. That shot no good from Williams, and Greg Steyer able to wrestle it away. I, I like Steyer, man, he's yeah. scrappy. Plays hard, strong, gets all those 50-50 rebounds. Six foot seven going against a seven footer in Mahmoud. And Cremo pass out to the top of the key. Campbell too strong on the three. But Will Brown has to be happy with the shot. It was off of a dribble penetration and a terrific dump down pass from Cremillo. Now in the corner, McMahon wanted the three, doesn't take it. He'll slow it back down. Darius Perry. Too strong. Back to the zone for Louisville. Boy, they're so long on that front line, aren't they? Wow. They are. And Albany, two of their last 11 from the field because of it. Cremo in the corner knocks down the three. Well, David Padgett not happy because that's a scouting report play right there. That's what this kid does. He shoots threes. You better get out on him. Make him a driver. But this is Louisville basketball right here. The block shot, the run out, the finish. Louisville, Albany's not at 11. Bowl season rolls on Thursday night with the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The Temple Owls battle the 8 and 4 FIU Panthers at the Trop in Tampa. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. All knotted up at 11 here at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. The Cardinals receiving votes in the poll, and Albany coming in at 11 and 2 this season, their best start to a year since joining Division 1. Right out of the timeout, this is McMahon for three. That's one of the things you gamble with when you extend and you pressure 94 feet. Shooters at the other end, and that's what McMahon is. So Ryan McMahon knocking down his first triple of the night. And now Campbell going to the basket. That's knocked away by Mahmoud. Listen, when you're going to a shot blocker, boy, you can't dipsy do in there and duck <laughs> under once. You got to take it to his chin. Because if you do what you did right there, that's exactly what's going to happen all night. Getting shots blocked. Already three blocks for Honest Mahmoud. Fourth in the country in shot blocking in those arms. It's hard to get around him. And this is a guy, Mahmoud, that was 6'1". He's on the bench right now, so he, he, he moves well. He was like a guard when he was coming out first play in this game. He does move really well. And what makes Louisville so tough is they can bring other real tall players in. And McMahon's getting hot. 
Hits another three. The most difficult three to defend in our game is the transition three. Now Nichols into the lane. No good at able to get the rebound himself. Last year, Ryan McMahon, 19 of his 20 field goals were threes. And he was missing at the beginning of the year with that broken rib, but now that he's back, it just adds offense to the Cardinals. Steyer in on Spalding. Can't get it to go out of bounds to Louisville. I love Albany how they go to the offensive glass. This is a team that has a plus 9-5 rebound differential. One of the concerns for David Padgett coming into this game, despite being so much longer and bigger and more athletic than Albany, was the backboard. You can see in the American East why this is a really good basketball team. Yeah. Fun fundamentally sound, play at their pace, really rebound the ball well. Jordan, I always say toughness in our game manifests itself on the defensive end of the floor and on the backboard. Albany does both of those things. So far, Albany out-rebounding Louisville 14-13 despite that size disadvantage. And now the Cardinals on offense with Spalding. Almost lost it, but McMahon got it. Ten to shoot for Louisville. Snyder pulls up. Off target, the rebound to Foster. But the game plan going is, was on those ball screen actions, Albany's going to go underneath the screen and try to force Louisville to beat them from behind the three-point line. Now, Louisville made 14 threes in their last game, but I like the game plan that Will Brown's utilizing. That time, Nichols too strong in a three-try out of bounds. But Louisville, when they take Mahmoud out of the game, you still got Ray Spalding, who's 6'10", 225. You got a freshman in Malik Williams, 6'11", 215. I mean, the towers just don't go away. They, they have tremendous size, tremendous length, terrific athleticism. And Spalding into the lane. And an offensive foul. So Ray Spalding picks up his second. And, and, and on defense, you're seeing Albany in gaps. That, that's terrific help side defense right there. John Cremo. Yeah, wonderful help side defense. We ran pack line when I was at Wake Forest, which, which Virginia utilizes, Arizona, Xavier as well. And your positioning is your help. Back in the day when you were extending and denying, Jordan, you'd be deny, help, and recover. But where Cremo was, he was in perfect help position initially. Now you, Albany, back on offense, trailing by six. And that's a three try from the corner off target from Costa Anderson. And out of bounds to Louisville. Well, Greg Steyer underneath is giving him all he can. Six rebounds so far, and he's given about six inches on his defender. How do you deal with that? Well, physicality negates athleticism, and this guy plays to his strength, which is his power, and uh, I, I love that. Usually you couldn't be as physical because of the new rules and freedom of movement, but that's what he is. He is a strong dude in there, and he plays to that. Mahmoud back into the game, spinning around his defender to lay it in. Like, like I was saying, it, it wasn't that long ago that that seven-footer was 6-1, and he has terrific footwork, handles the ball well for a big guy. And a cross-court pass to Steyer, who lays it in. I'm telling you, he could be a tight end. That's a heck of a <laughs> catch, gather, and finish on the other side of the rim. Driving in McMahon, trying to get it to Mahmoud. But that one off target, and it brings us to a timeout here on the floor. For Ryan McMahon and Louisville up by six, and he's the reason. McMahon draining from deep once and then twice. Louisville leading Albany 19 to 13, 7.34 to go here in this first half of play with Dino Gaudio. I'm Jordan Burnfield. Dino, Albany is just 6 of 24 from the field so far, but they're hanging tough despite their scoring woes. They, they are, and it's because of their defense and their rebound. And they have 15 rebounds, seven of which are offensive rebounds. Y you can't have a law on the road with turnovers or ill-advised shots, and they really haven't done that. 
Underneath, it's Foster, a little too strong on the reverse. Well, I, I think Mamou changed the shot. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing against Mahmoud in the post, then you got to draw him to you and then dump down and dish for others. So let's drive the ball, draw him, and find others. That shot was too short from Dwayne Sutton, the redshirt sophomore. Back the other way, Clark, and a foul call. But you're exactly right. They're only down six, and they're shooting 24% from the field, Albany, and one for six from behind the three-point line. The other thing they have to try to do, Jordan, is get to the get to the free throw line, free throw line. If I could talk as well, they only have two free throw attempts thus far. Steyer now with some space from Mahmoud, trying to post Cremo inside. And got him on King. The spin, the shot too short. King, great job of bodying and walling him up. They go into Mahmoud. That's too strong, and Steyer there for the rebound. You, you know what I wish I would have seen out of Mahmoud on that play? Post a little deeper. He was out a little further than he wanted to be. Catch it where you could score from. You see a guy in Cremo who's 6'4", post on one end, and then the 7-foot Mahmoud posting on the other end. <laughs> well, like Will Brown said, like Cremo has really good post moves inside for a guard. And now Steyer in over Mahmoud. That's too strong. Albany can't get it to fall from inside, and now a three-try. That's off target from Sutton, and Cremo there to get it. Steyer there to set a screen. Clark the three. Wow. <laughs> I was about to say, no, no, we don't want that one right there if we're Albany. But One of those is a coach where you say, no, 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 yes. Exactly. Now King going to the basket. Strong what move. What a strong move. And the hesitation dribble just froze the defender enough to, for him to get his shoulders by. B.J. King, his first basket, the sophomore from Cleveland. Had a season-high 17 against Memphis on Saturday. Jordan, that ball went down the sideline. It was like David Padgett with his sixth defender right there. As Cremo is heating up, too. Cremo now with six points in the first half. And Albany back within two. Adele has that one knocked away. Right to Snyder. Well, when you need a big shot, that guy has been as hot as anybody for Louisville. And Quentin Snyder was like he meant to get that ball right there. So Louisville answers the three from Primo. And now Clark has it knocked away by Mahmoud and another block by Adele out of bounds. The Louisville block party. And Anas Mahmoud now tied for ninth all-time on Louisville's career block list after that one as you watch Snyder hit the three. Well, I'm not going to say a great pass. Somehow that thing just scored it out <laughs> of there. But Mahmoud comes over to help. See, on that drive right there when you draw Mahmoud, flip that ball back to Steyer. Let him finish with the bank shot. And that pass taken away by Mahmoud. Sutton cannot finish. Nice move, though. Nichols on the other end, cannot cash in. Snyder. Now Adele around the screen. Gets the hometown roll. And you're seeing Louisville try to pick up the tempo, get this at a little faster pace than Albany wants to play. So they're extending their defense. Five straight points for the Cardinals. Now back up to a seven-point lead. Tried to feed the post. Campbell on Sutton. Now five to shoot. Cremo in around the tall trees. Boy, he's, he's really crafty, isn't he? Not the quickest guy in the world, but really knows how to play. He's a guy out there that plays the game with his mind, not just his body. Brings us to a foul. But Albany hanging tough, down five here in Louisville against the Cardinals. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Elite Direct Therapy. Get drug-free, deep penetrating, lower back pain relief. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider, naturally refreshing. New Year's Day will have the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number three, Georgia. Number two, Oklahoma. Kick things off in the Rose Bowl game at 5 p.m. Eastern to Pacific from Pasadena. Then it's number four, Alabama. Number one, Clemson. And the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. Dino Gaudio, Jordan Burnfield with you as Quentin Snyder goes to the free throw line. Just reading about... Clemson. I'm thinking about last night watching you with <laughs> Dabo Sweeney from Clemson. I think he was ready to take your job. I, I'll tell you what, and, and Dabo <laughs> has a game tonight. He's, he's coaching the 17 and under. He's an assistant coach for uh, what I think his son and his nephew's basketball team. Well, he knows his basketball in he addition does. to football. He read the promo really well. I was impressed. There's a nice feed underneath for Foster, but a little too strong. Here's the problem. Dabo's rate is a little hard, higher than mine was, as we see, as we see Snyder in transition. So they might have to pay him a little more than they pay me if he's reading those for uh, <laughs> promos for money. Yeah, those are going to be expensive promos. Yes, those are expensive promos. We found out that Malik Williams for Louisville has a sprained right ankle. He's getting x-rayed. He may return to the game, so we'll watch for that. And now Foster underneath puts it in off glass. Well, when you, when you don't have the big fella in there, Mamou, there's not as much resistance at the rim right there, and you could finish at the cup. And now Snyder knocks down the three. I wanted to say when he was at the free throw line. This guy right here needs to assert himself a little more in the last couple possessions Quentin Snyder has. Louisville five for their last six from the field, and Foster can't get it to roll in. Albany's missed a few of those tonight. And now Adele. Louisville's hitting up. Danger zone right now with two minutes to go for Albany. And all of a sudden, Louisville has ballooned the lead to 34-23 in the blink of an eye. Yeah, Albany, you have, they have to be careful. They don't want to play too fast. So you're going under the screen, which was the game plan coming in, and Snyder has played really well. And then Adele, a terrific middle game. And Joe Cremo at the free throw line. Eight first half points so far for the Great Danes. Great way to stop the bleeding for Albany, getting Cremo at the line. Now we're talking about a guy 54 for 60 coming in, shooting 90 from the stripe. Preseason second team All-America East player, fourth in the conference in scoring. Here is Kane. Good call. And he got bumped on the way in by Cremo. Hardest thing to do in our game today is guard the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Guys are so good off the dribble. And, you know, it's all defense. It's almost soccer defense. It's all got to move your feet. Right. With the new rules, too, you really can't make contact as a defender with the player you're trying to guard. It, it, it's tough. And I, I like when you got big, strong guards like Louisville does drive the ball to the basket. Put foul pressure on defenders, especially when you're in the bonus. DJ King at the free throw line. Comley knocks down the first. Darius Perry checks back into the game for the Cardinals. Now what Perry brings to the floor, he can really pressure the basketball. Quickness, athletic, he's a guy that can defend on the perimeter. B.J. King knocks down both. So now some pressure at Albany able to beat it. And Cremo will hand it off to Nichols to set up the offense. Tend to shoot quickly for Albany. Cremo posting up. Cannot get that one to go, but Steyer right there to put it in. Johnny on the spot. Always handy, isn't he? Greg Steyer now four points so far. And that three try too strong in the rebound to Foster. Well, that's the shots that Albany is, is giving Louisville. The shot from behind the screen. 
Louisville, not the greatest three-point shooting team, but certainly have found the touch of late. They did against Memphis on Saturday, knocking down 14 of them. Now Nichols for three. Boy, that was right in front of us. That looked good just when it left his hands. Yep, David Nichols now with five points. Well, now if Albany does a good job boxing out here, they'll get the last shot of the, of the half. Once 11 point lead now, seven. He smoked too soon. That's VJ King. Boy, has he improved from his freshman year. Bigger, stronger, playing with more confidence. Time now a timeout. 38 29 Louisville back in 30 seconds. Coming up at halftime, Carl Ravitch, Jay Williams, Seth Greenberg in the studio. They will have highlights from around the country and stats and all sorts of good stuff for you. So make sure you stay with us. Joe Cremo and U Albany trailing 38 to 29. Louisville was able to balloon that lead out to 11, and now it's nine. About an eight second difference between the shot and the game clock. Foster underneath for the big slam. Really good slip screen right there. So last possession of the first half, it would appear. 10 seconds to go. Perry with four, with three, the kick out. Adele at the buzzer, too short. And it brings us to halftime with Albany hanging tough, but the hometown Louisville Cardinals, a 38 to 31 lead here in this final game of the Gotham Classic in Louisville, Kentucky. Coming up, Carl, Jay, and Seth will have the highlights in the studio. We've got a good one so far. The Cardinals running, and they've got the lead over Joe Cremo and U Albany after 20 minutes. Star-studded evening here in Louisville, Kentucky. There's George Lopez and Tay Diggs. We're just a couple of guys here. Dino Gaudio, Jordan Burnfield with you here at the KFC Yum Center. But that's pretty cool. They got a, a big crowd with some with some big stars out they, here they, tonight. They, they wanted to come down and take pictures with us. <laughs> yeah. So wait a minute, we got to work. Yeah, we, we got stuff to do. Yeah, we got another 20 minutes. Maybe with you. They didn't want to come take a picture with me. I'm pretty sure. I'll tell you what. Albany stalemate in the paint, 16-16 with Louisville and uh, leading in second chance points. But where Louisville has hurt them. Is on, the, is on the break, 7-0, Louisville fast break points. And second half begins and immediately a foul against V.J. King, second personal against the sophomore out of Cleveland. The former McDonald's All-American was King, and now Albany setting up offensively to try to cut into this deficit, trailing by seven as we begin the second half. Really good communication on the switches off the down screen by the Louisville defense. Travis Charles muscles that one into the basket. But Ray Spalding has length. He's got to contest that shot a little harder. Charles picked up a couple of fouls early in the game. Didn't get a lot of minutes after that. See if he can stay on the floor here in the second half. Tend to shoot for the Cardinals on their first possession. Dang Adele, a nice move into the last shot. With the left hand. He's their most talented player. He's a next level player for them. I, I just think in watching them play several times when I called their game last week, a little more effort on the defensive end of the floor from, for him and make him even better. Nichols around the screen, the three try off target. Steyer underneath, and that one swatted by Mahmoud, and now a jump ball. Possession error will send it the other way, but again, honest Mahmoud directing traffic underneath. Well, and, and we're seeing Greg Steyer, and, and he's a below the rim guy, but you know what? He uses his bulk. I loved how he put his body into Mahmoud right there. I'm not crazy. We got a great officiating staff, and Timmy Nestor, who's 11 NCAA tournaments, Pat Driscoll, the middle official right there with four NCAA, four finals and 17 NCAA's, and Keith Kimball. But wasn't crazy with the quick jump ball call on Steyer. 
Now Albany will get another opportunity here to continue to cut in. No call there. As Karimo went right into Adele. Now Karimo trying to get around the mood. There's the shot good from Charles. <laughs> You know what you love about Travis Charles? He's a really good offensive player, but man, he just stays within what he does well. As we see Adele with the three from the corner. Dang Adele now with 13 points. Louisville up eight. Now Cremo trying to feed inside, and Spalding's going to be called for the foul. Spalding now with three personals, so that's going to be something for David Padgett to monitor down the stretch. And if you're Albany, keep putting foul pressure on him by driving the ball. Boy, if you could get to the bonus here quickly, that bodes well for you in the second half on the road. Now Nichols will set up the offense for you, Albany. Ten to shoot. And now another foul coming up. This one will go against Wayne Sutton. Well, that's the freedom of the movement, and that's not that's not on the officials. They're just calling it as the rule book asks them to do it. Yep. You put one hand on a guy, it's an automatic foul. Yeah, there, there's no question. He put his left hand right in his chest. That's a good call by Tim Nestor. There's the post up by for Cre from Cremo. Could not get the roll. Boy, good look though. You're happy with the shot if you're Will Brown. Snyder to Adele for three over Campbell. That's off target. Mahmoud the rebound and now a foul. Little Bronx cheer from the Louisville crowd. <laughs> Ball will go against Greg Steyer. That is his third personal. So now Mahmoud will send it out to Sutton. Adele going in against two defenders and draws another foul. Well, Travis Charles was in good position, but just hold your position right there. Stay wide. You're in your gap as a help defender, and just take the drive under your chest. Charles had those two fouls in the first few minutes of the first half. Picks up his third foul within the first four minutes of the second half. B.J. King hoists from deep, and that one's way off. Campbell going in against the tall trees. That one off target. Louisville in transition. The feed to King, and he's not fouled. The crowd wanted the call, and then underneath, Charles able to grab it. I think there was almost a, the most faint of a whistle there. Like one of the officials was ready to call it, and then they didn't. I, th I felt like all the players reacted as if there was going to be a foul there. Well, well, you're a lot younger than me. I could barely hear anyways, let alone a faint <laughs> whistle. I can't hear loud whistles, let alone. So maybe I'm like hearing noises for a second. Like everybody just kind of froze for that instant. But you know what? Albany really hustling, getting on the floor. Both teams playing really, really hard. This game. We knew this would be a good basketball game. I, I think Louisville has given Albany uh, all the respect they deserve coming into this thing. And certainly, these two teams played tough for the first 20-plus minutes. And honest Mahmoud again. And this guy is just too tough underneath. And it brings us to a timeout on the floor. Honest Mahmoud, another shot block. He's got five in the game, and the Cardinals up eight. You're watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by Zales. There is Honest Mahmoud, and he's had another really strong game tonight. Five blocks in this one. The senior from Cairo, Egypt. And you know, this guy, really a strong player who can play at the next level. No, no question. I was reading somewhere he said he wanted to be the first Egyptian to play in the NBA. But I, I distinctly remember that, that Ala 
Abdul Nabi played at Duke, was born in Egypt, and uh, so Anas will be the second, will be the second, I think, Egyptian to play in the league. And you know what? I don't care what nationality, he's gonna be in the NBA, this guy right here. He's awfully good. The seven foot senior from Cairo started playing basketball when he was 12 and ended up playing for the Egy Egyptian national team. This guy speaks four languages, very worldly, and very well may be the second Egyptian on the next level. And, and the reason he's a, he's, he's a good defender, we talked about his size and his shot blocking, but he's the voice behind their defense. He's always talking, he's always pointing, as we saw on the possession right there. I always say, Jordan, you hear good defensive teams, and those guys on that back line have to be the voice of your defense. He does that for Lowell. And he sets the screen. Now King going to the basket against Charles. Can't get the roll. Around the screen, Nichols to Cremo in the corner. Off on the three. Underneath a second chance opportunity for Foster. Look at the final of that Duke Evansville game, 104 to 40. Boy, you go in the camera, and that's danger zone right there. Marty Simmons has a good team at Evansville, and one of the few baskets for Albany in transition right now as Louisville wants a timeout. Do you know about the Wofford score? That is a slow pace of play. This one here, right about at that same pace. Friday, we'll have another star-studded NBA doubleheader to tip off your weekend at 8 p.m. Eastern. DeAndre Jordan and the Clippers are in H-Town to take on James Harden and Chris Paul, the streaking Rockets, who have won 14 straight. Then we'll take you to Oracle for Alonzo and the Lakers squaring off against KD and the Warriors. They've won eight straight themselves on the heels of the Rockets in the West. Coverage tips off with NBA countdown at 7.30 on ESPN and the ESPN app. And the Hornets haven't lost since Chris Paul has come back. 14 straight. Ryan McMahon, that was hit three threes tonight off the bench. And he's got it, bringing it back across for Louisville. Dang it, Dell to the bucket. Yes! Or are they going to wave that off? You know what? I, yeah, yeah, that, that's they a good that call. Off. Yeah, that's a good call. I, 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 you know what? At the next level, that's a continuation. Right. Terrific pass. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. So Nichols called for the foul. And so wiped that basket off. And now McMahon is fouled going in. Joe Cremo picking up his third personal. Take a look at some of the scores. In the ACC, we mentioned that Duke score, and then how about Wofford leading North Carolina in the second half? Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you play someone and where you play it is so important. For Evansville, the win wasn't good because they're playing Duke after an 11-day layoff as Snyder hits the three after they lost to Boston College. So you know Mike Krzyzewski was after those guys for 11 days. They're an elite offensive team, and they obviously defended tonight. So playing Duke tonight wasn't good, and Ware and Cameron, that's never good. But I'll tell you what, Wofford, good defensive team, and the pace of play has been perfect for Wofford when you're playing a Carolina team. Because when you play them, man, you better get back on defense. The Terriers have done that. Leading the defending national champions in the second half, something not a lot of people saw. Now Snyder, the spin into the lane, he got it, and the foul. Boy, he is really emerging as one of the better guards in the entire ACC. David Nichols picking up his second personal as Quentin Snyder gets right around Nichols. Well, the spin move enabled him to get his shoulders by the guy. Little hook with the hand, I like it. <laughs> Good move. That was pretty. And now Quentin Snyder completing the three-point plays, got 15 points, eight double-figure scoring games this season. And Louisville back up 11, ties their largest lead of the night. 
I, I like what Albany does against the pressure. They, they don't give Louisville a free press. In other words, hey, let's bring it across the timeline and then just pull it out. They're always trying to attack and score. Make them pay the price for extending their defense. Remo trying to get it inside. Dangadell there, and then Nichols the steal in the bucket. David Nichols sure is quick, isn't he? Really quick. And now Mahmoud. I'll tell you, not bad defense, better offense. Honest Mahmoud, eight points tonight, five blocks. Campbell tries to go around the moon. He swats it away. McMahon ahead of the pack. Cannot finish. And Campbell the rebound. And now they call Snyder for the push. Well, that might have been a bad play on the defensive end by Quinn Snyder. But I'll tell you what, on offense, he has been sensational in the second half. Splash from behind the three-point line from Quinn Snyder. Back here in Louisville where the Cardinals now leading by 11. And Honest Mahmoud has blocked seven shots tonight. He blocked seven against Memphis on Saturday. He has moved into 11th place on the NCAA's active career block list. And this guy now in ninth in Louisville history past Terrence Jennings tonight with those seven blocks came in five behind. This guy just every time we come back, you know, we're talking about him, but he is making plays every minute. He, he really is. There's nothing more important than the ability to grind, and uh, he does that. He, he knows what he's good at, good at, and he, he plays to his strength. Terrific timing, anticipation, really good defender. And like I said, it's just not the block shots, which is outstanding. He's the voice of their defense as well. Cremo underneath. Foster ran out of room and now tend to shoot for Albany. Clark for three. That's off, and Nichols there to stick it back. How about that? <laughs> David Nichols is six feet tall, and he got up there to put it back in. And you know what? I, I wouldn't share when my point guard got those second shot opportunities because I'm like, he's supposed to be back on defense. How's he getting an offensive rebound? Now McMahon for three. That's off target. Mahmoud the rebound and knocked out of bounds by Clark. It's another one of those things I assume Dino or as the coach are like, well, okay. Yeah. No, would, no, no, yes. I would tell our guy, listen, on the lift of the shot, start getting back on defense. All right? I don't want you going to the offensive glass. Especially not your six foot point guard. Yeah. Now McMahon, another try from deep. Boy, halfway down. McMahon with three triples already tonight. Back in that matchup zone for Louisville. Ten to shoot. Steyer the kick. Clark for three. Around the rim and out, and a foul on the floor. That's a good offensive play because Steyer is driving the ball into the lane, collapses the defense, and then the kick out for the jump shot. B.J. King picks up his third foul. And Albany with a fresh 30. Clark drives nice. in. Nice pass to Foster. Can't finish. And it's tipped away by King. McMahon takes it in and draws the foul. Oh, they're going to... David Padgett did not like the call. They call an offensive foul. And now the officials sorting this one out. Let's take a look. Good shot fake by McMahon. Oh, 
Let's see, McMahon, the charge. Did you think that was a good initial call? I, I thought it was a good call, but I, I, I thought we, we saw right there was, I, I think Dwayne Sutton just pushed him in the chest. And so they're trying to sort out now at the table what to make of for the call. Let's watch right here. Yeah. Watch, watch Let's 24 see. in white. Watch 24 in white. Boy, he sticks the ball in his chest. Oh, and then yeah. the retaliation he, 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 from Clark. What? Smart play and physical play are both important and they're not independent of one another. Like, you know, you know retaliatory fouls, I would tell our guy, just camouflages immaturity. Like, you got to be bigger than that. So they're calling a double technical foul. And now Dino is going to get the explanation here from the officials. The crowd doesn't like it, but often it's the case that even if you didn't start it, if you finish it, you're going to get the foul too. What did they say, Dino? Yeah, both unsportsmanlike technical, so that's personal fouls on both players as well. And we pick up at the... Uh, Resumption of where we left off. It was the charge on Louisville, so Albany ball on the baseline. And now driving to the basket, the miss from Clark. Second chance, no good. And another block from Mahmoud. And now a foul is called. Well, the crowd is riled up. And Honest Mahmoud is going to be called for the foul. That's his first. I'll tell you what, multiple efforts by Albany on the offensive glass. So we see Mahmoud with the block, Foster. I'll tell you, some guys don't have a relentless personality. I'll tell you, a lot of these Albany guys do. Foster knocks down the first free throw. You know, we, we talked in the open how, how important the mental part of this game is because we know Albany's a good basketball team. Louisville knew it as well coming in. When we talked to David Padgett before the game, he was shaking his head saying, this is a really good team, veteran guys. They have a toughness about them. This is a team, if they win the American East and get a high seed, or low seed, I should say, could win an NCAA tournament game. Yeah. They have four starters back from a season ago. They took Vermont to the brink, but lost in the American East title game. And now McMahon drops through another triple. Ryan McMahon now with 12 points, all on three. Well, Amard Clark is on him defensively. And when you're in help position, your body might be in help. But I'll tell you what, your mind better be with McMahon in the corner for the shot. Albany, oh, for their last six from the field. They need a shot to go down. Around a screen, Nichols for three. Too strong, the rebound, Spalding. Snyder. Sutton misses the three. Nichols racing ahead. Can't finish underneath. And now Campbell draws the foul. When you're playing McMahon and you're in help position as a defender, your body's in help. Watch on the lower block right there. Yeah, you, you know he's a shooter. You have to get out there a little quicker if you're a Mod Clark. Ryan McMahon making his presence felt. Did four threes tonight. 12 points in the game. We mentioned earlier he had broken his rib in a practice in October, so was not able to return until the Indiana game about a week ago. And you can see what kind of an impact he can make when he's on the floor. Not the quickest guy in the world, Ryan McMahon, but I'll tell you what, understands angles, understands how to play. One out of two at the line for Devontae Campbell. Snyder. And a foul. Nichols got a hand in. That's three. Nichols, his third person. 
Nichols has three. Cremo has three. Steyer and Charles, that's four of the five starters for Albany. So they're going to have to be careful over the next 9-16. And here's the other thing you love about Quentin Snyder. C coming off an outstanding four games leading into tonight. 16 points a game in those four, nine for 16 from behind the three-point line. And then tonight playing real well. And what I love about him as a point guard, zero turnovers thus far in the game this evening from Quentin Snyder. Really efficient player, preseason second team all ACC on the Koozie Award watch list. Quentin Snyder. And for a team that's much younger this year than last year, he is that senior veteran leader along with Mahmoud. Both of them are captains on this team along with Dang Adele. Like, like, like we said in the Gotham Classic, he's the most outstanding player. We talked about 16 points, 9 threes, 3.5 assists, 14 assists in those four games. And the thing I really appreciate out of that point guard is tonight, no turnovers as well. Every coach's dream, right? To have Absolutely. a point guard that can pass and not turn the ball over. Nichols almost lost it. The feet underneath and Steyer there. That's what you want to do. Lift the big fella Mahmoud off the block outside of the restricted area arc, and then you can make the pass for the layup to Steyer. Albany trails by nine. Just over eight minutes left here in Louisville. Snyder out to Dang Adele. Five to shoot, and the acrobatic shot won't go. The best defense on that one was getting out of his way, <laughs> yeah. Jordan, because he wasn't on balance. Tried to scoop that one up there, but could not. Now they're going to post up Cremo. Good, good, good offensive call from Will Brown. He has McMahon on him, and we talked about it before. Joe Cremo at 6'4", a really good post-up player. So Ryan McMahon picks up the foul. He's got three. But the Albany Great Danes trying to stay with it. This is a nice beat inside to Greg Steyer, who's got six tonight. Bowl season rolls on Thursday night with the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The Temple Owls battle the 8 and 4 FIU Panthers at the Trop in Tampa. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Joe Cremo going to the free throw line here. Albany won for their last nine from the field, but the real issue has been offensive rebounding and the disparity between Albany and Louisville. Hey, hey Jordan, Albany's played 13 game, has out-rebounded every opponent that they've played thus far. And I'll tell you, just punking Louisville in this game on the backboard right now, 42 to 31. But more impressively, 19 offensive rebounds for Albany, plus 11 second shot opportunities, or I should say second shot points for the Danes. Dang Adele tried to drive and kick. And threw it away from McMahon, a turnover to Albany. And we say all that, but Albany trails by just seven points. And we talked about it in the first half too, Dino. Albany has done a good job of staying in this thing despite the things that have plagued them in this game. They, they really have, and a big reason why is, is what they've done on the backboard. Charles gets the roll. And one of the other reasons, he's shooting such a high field goal percentage, 61%. A wonderful soft touch as we saw with the little jump shot from 12 feet. Back to a five-point game and the miss, and it's a rebound by Mahmoud. Adele, too short, Mahmoud there again. Snyder has that one swatted away. Devontae Campbell with the big swat. After the size gave Louisville three opportunities, Campbell said, I've had enough. Well, when you got a veteran team, when you don't have fast break opportunities on the road, they get right into their half-court offense and start to grind you down. There's a three from Cremo. 
it's good. Joe Cremo buries from deep, and it's a 9-0 Albany run to get it back to two. Well, they were getting stops, and that's what they needed. Their defense has spurred them back on the offensive end of the floor. This guy right here, Joe Cremo, you talk to the coaches, they say, this kid has no life. He lives in the gym. That's why this kid is such a terrific player. Dribble penetration, lifts the mood out from the paint. The step back jumpers, which create space for Charles. And Cremo, we talked about him at the top of the, the, top of the show. 53% from behind the three-point line. The junior from Scotia, New York, Glenville High School. Man, can he play. Cremo with the Primo shot. And now a two-point game. 6.27 to go here in Louisville. Amazing to think, too, that Louisville had a double-digit lead on this Albany team. Most teams would cave, but not the Great Danes. They, they have a lot of experience. They start three, three juniors, a senior, and a fifth-year senior. Now McMahon feeding underneath for Mahmoud, and a foul coming up. That, that's a good call, call by David Padgett, the pick and roll, because they're showing hard on the ball screen, so you get Greg Steyer out on the floor, and he's not able to recover quick enough. And now Steyer's got four. So four personals is... You see David Padgett and Trent Johnson. I was a roll the dice guy. I played guys with two in the first half and six minutes to go here. He's going to take him out right now. You know what? Foster has played well when he's come in. You were a roll the dice guy. See, I think you could change that and say you trusted your players. That makes it look a little, no a little easier no for question. you. Yeah, a little better. Said, it's okay. You got four fouls. I'm leaving you. Hey, if any relationship's going to work, right? right? Husband and wife, parent and child, coach and player, has to have its foundation and trust. That's right. And Mahmoud splits the free throws. One possession game. Nichols for the tie. Off target. Rebounded by Albany. Nichols into the paint and puts it in. That's what offensive rebounding will do for you. Saved another possession. Albany down one right now with 540 to play. This is King around the Mahmoud screen in traffic. No call out of bounds. Will Brown and the Albany Great Danes. Last year, they got a win over a Big Ten team at Penn State. This year, trying to get a win over an ACC team in Louisville. Dang Adele for three. And now a foul that's going the other way. King over the back. That's a good look. That's the exact right read on the, on the roll. The corner man lifted up, dang it down wide open. He's got to make that shot. VJ King now with four personal fouls. And Travis Charles to the free throw line, 82% on the year. He's only had one opportunity tonight, and he missed it, but makes the first one. Ray Spaulding back into the game. David Padgett wants the big lineup on the floor. And you're back into Quentin Snyder time right now. Down one at home. One point Albany lead. 5.18 to go here at the KFC Yum Center. Mahmoud. No. And the rebound to Nichols. The I momentum like just continues to shift. Yeah, I, I, I like it because Albany now is just going to play five-on-five five basketball. They're going to grind it out in the half court with a one-point lead. Go deep into the shot clock. Primo into the paint. Got it! 
He makes a left-handed runner. Left-handed down the lane. Albany with a three-point lead now. Adele to kick out Snyder. Drives on Nichols. And a foul call. Well, when you got when you got a veteran point guard like Quentin Snyder, a senior, you got to put the ball in his hands, and he has to make plays for you. Nichols really just fell down on that play. It was going for the charge call. Well, because he went down, it was the trip. Yep. And so now he goes back to the bench, and Will Brown's going to calm him down. As Snyder hits the free throw. Now, let's see if David Padgett in Louisville extends their defense on the second free throw to put some pressure on Albany. What do you think Will Brown just told David Nichols? Listen, it, 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 you can't be emotionally intoxicated. You know what I mean when you're playing this game? I like that. I don't. I didn't like when my guys were emotionally intoxicated. <laughs> I like the phrasing, though. <laughs> Snyder now with 19, back to a one-point game. And we're seeing the pressure. Boy, these are great basketball fans, aren't they? They are. Big crowd again here at the Young Center in Louisville. Five to shoot. Cremo gets it to go again. 18 points for the junior from Scotia, New York. I'll tell you, a big thing for him this year was when Will Brown, he used to be the backup point guard. He goes, nope, we're going to let you just worry about scoring the ball, and he's done a much better job of that this year. Adele beating Spalding in the post, turns around on his defender, can't hit, picked up by Mahmoud, and he's fouled. 65-62, Albany trying to pull the upset in Louisville. Don't go anywhere. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zale. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever. And Dr. Show's massaging gel insoles. Joe Cremo and Albany on a huge second half run, and they've got the lead here in Louisville, Dino. Well, they've really ignited in the second half offensively. And Cremo has been really special. Nine points, three rebounds in the second half and has been just terrific. Albany's defense and second shot opportunities have given them the lead. Albany on a 17-3 run over the last 446. Louisville has missed its last eight field goal attempts. And Honest Mahmoud misses both free throws. 3.20 to go here at the Yum Center and Albany trying to pull the upset. Charles keeps. 10 to shoot for the Great Danes. Primo almost stolen from. They're trapping him. Three seconds to shoot. Two. Will Albany have time to get a shot up? They won't. Terrific defensive possession for Louisville. Terrific defense. Louisville gets the big stop. Will Brown can only watch as his team has a three-point lead with under three minutes to go. Active hands by Dangadell. That's a great defensive possession. Snyder to the corner. McMahon is blocked by Cremo. I'll tell you, in the second half, Albany's played really well on the defensive end of the floor. Cremo has been the best player on the floor. I, I, I just wish Albany, I just wish Louisville would go inside on, on the offensive end. Cremo to the basket over Spalding, no good. A rebound, Sutton. Down the floor, Spalding puts it in. Spalding. What a catch and what a finish from Ray Spalding. Louisville trails by one. Standing in the young center. 
near steal. It'll stay with Albany. Now, there's a question of who the basketball went off of. And two minutes and under, we can go to the monitor to review. And it gives both coaches an opportunity to talk things over with their guys as the officiating crew will take a look. Yeah, Ray Spalding was adamant that it went off a of style. Coming up on SportsCenter after the DXL Frisco Bowl on ESPN, we'll tell you who Dabo Sweeney is using to motivate his team as they get ready for Alabama. Plus a unique look at James Harden's history-making start as the Red Hot Rockets look for 15 in a row and a report from the Cowboys practice facility on how Jason Garrett plans to use Zeke Elliott Sunday against the Seahawks. SportsCenter with Nicole Frisco and John Anderson on ESPN and the ESPN app. Now, Ray Spalding absolutely deflected the ball, but let's see who was last to touch. Boy, that was, that was tough for me to see. Let me see it again if we can, fellas. I couldn't tell from that one. Good. Slow down a little bit. There's Spalding's hand, and it looks I like Steyer's hand. hand. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's Louisville basketball. Yep. I think you're right. The question was whether Steyer touched the ball or whether he put his hands together without ever making contact, but it does look like he got fingers on the ball. The three officials still talking it over. And they're sending it to Louisville. From what I saw, from what I saw, I think that's the right call. I really do. Take one more look. Off of Spalding, then off of Steyer. Well, when you got a 7-6 wingspan like Ray Spalding, you get hands on everything he did right there. And now Louisville with a chance to move ahead. Under two minutes to go here at the Yum Center. Look in. They go inside, Spalding against Steyer. Posting him up, got it! Louisville back in the lead, 90 seconds left. Nichols for three, no good. Charles down there trying to get the rebound along with three other players. When that ball goes below the foul line, you got to play like a man. Put those big boy pants on. That's it. Get a piece of the lane on your dribble drive. Quentin Snyder slow to get up at the end of that play. Possession arrow favors the Cardinals. Credit Louisville, Dino. They've gotten a couple of big stops here down the stretch. They really have. They really have. They've extended their defense, was dis disruptive with their defense, where Albany can't make guard to forward entry passes. Just over a minute to go. McMahon for three. Four-point Louisville lead. Timeout Albany. A 7-0 run over the last 123 in Albany, which had gotten so hot, has not scored in almost three minutes. And now the Cardinals up four. Well, when you have a shooter on the wing and you dribble towards this guy, he has to help McMahon. Wow. The sophomore guard from Cardinal Moody out of Sarasota has hit big time baskets tonight. That was a cold blooded three right there. Ryan McMahon has had a great game tonight. 15 points, tying his career high. Five of eight from distance and has made a huge difference in tonight's game.
What a great atmosphere in the KFC Young Center tonight. This place is phenomenal to watch a basketball game. Just a gorgeous arena. And Quentin Snyder is limping off the floor with the training staff. But play resumes with under a minute to go. And Albany now down four. And an ear steal by Spalding, but out of bounds, it'll stay with Albany. What do you think Will Brown tries to draw up here? Well, I, I, I think you got to go to Primo. He's your guy. Now, you, you got length on him with, with V.J. King. Tried to double Cremo, but he's got it. 15 to shoot for Albany. Cremo around the screen. Now Nichols for three. Front rim no good. Nichols got it back. Tipped away, and it's caught by King. And a foul on Charles. Wow, we've seen the length of Louisville at the rim with block shots. Now you're seeing it on the defensive end of the floor with deflections. Boy, they have really picked up their intensity when they went down the last two and a half minutes of this basketball game. Nichols able to get two rebounds, but then the tip, and King has the free throws for Louisville with the shot clock off. A four-point game. And in this Louisville team, I'm sorry, Jordan, number one in the ACC in free throw shooting at 78%, struggling down a stretch from the foul line. Wow. Misses both. Shot clock is off. Albany's got to hurry. 20 seconds left. Primo. Campbell for three. Got it. And a timeout taken by Albany. Devontae Campbell came into this game just a 17% three-point shooter. And Cam's a huge one right there. Four for 24 coming into the game from behind the three-point line. But you know what? When you got to take the shot, it's not as much pressure down like they were. And give the young guy credit for knocking it down. Now, here's what you have to do if you're Will Brown. 16 and a half to play. We're going to extend our defense. We're going to see if we can get a five count. Then we're going to go one trap, and I think one trap, and then I think you have to foul somebody. 16.6 seconds left. 69-68, Louisville the lead. Now, DJ King just missed two free throws down here. So he's a guy you might want to get. Is he out there right now? No, coach took it. We understand Wofford is up three on North Carolina late, so two great games involving ACC teams tonight. Yeah, DJ King is on the floor. And now another timeout taken as Louisville did not like what they saw trying to inbound the basketball. Take a look now at the ACC scoreboard. And how about this? 32 seconds left and Wofford leading at the Dean Dome 75 to 72. I'll tell you what, you go into the Smith Center and win a basketball game against the Tar Heels, that's a difficult task indeed, but uh, still time in that one. And we've got a real good one here. 16.6 seconds left. A one-point lead for the Louisville Cardinals, who are 35-6 and six in December over the last six years, including 23 of 28. But the Albany Great Danes on the verge of a huge upset win. Trailing by a point. And now the Cardinals... Will they be able to get to the free throw line or will Albany force a steal? Now, B.J. King coming in is 71% from the free throw line. Of, of the free throw shooters out there, he is the worst and he just missed two. So that's a guy you might want to get. Spalding comes in 78%, but one for two on the night. So you know Will Brown said, try to get a five count and see if we can get a steal. One trap. And then we're going to have to foul somebody. Inbound goes to King. They go for the trap. King almost lost it. Now throws it. And finally the foul called with 10 seconds left. 
as it gets to Darius Perry, the freshman. Who's 20 for 20 from the free throw line on the season. That is right. They, might have, they, they probably should have got V.J. King right here in the corner. They almost got this one. Well, I think they knew that they were running out of time and that they had no choice but to foul. King almost loses it there. How about this guy? 20 for 20 from the line coming in. Yep, Darius Perry, the freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia. 21 for 21. <laughs> yes, sir, the freshman. Darius Perry had 17 points in his debut against George Mason, tied his coach and David Padgett for the fifth highest total in a Louisville freshman's debut. And now at the free throw line, trying to ice this one for the Cardinals, who are up two with 10 seconds left. Misses the second. Albany's going to have a shot. Down by two. Five seconds. Four. Three. Cremo. Campbell. No good. But wait. They want a phone call. They won't get it. And the Louisville Cardinals have won it. Right at the end, the official looking at Joe Cremo and looking back at the others as if there would be another call. But it does not go. And the Louisville Cardinals survive with the 70 to 68 win over Albany. What do you think at the end there? Boy, I, you know, it didn't, it didn't change. Let's see if he got him on the elbow. Looked like he might have hit him on the elbow, yeah. I think. I think he did. Let's, Let's look at see. his right elbow. Yeah, it looks like he got him. Looks like he hit him on the elbow. At the very end, but no call is made. Dang Adele going for the block. Gets a hand on Devontae Campbell. I, I, I know one thing. This was a great college basketball game. It was a great game, and the Louisville Cardinals pick up the win. They move to 8-1 and one at home, and Albany loses for just the third time this season. So for Dino Gaudio, my name is Jordan Burnfield saying so long from Louisville, Kentucky. The final score, the Cardinals 70, Albany 68. All games airing on the ESPN networks or streaming live in the ESPN app. Or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Good night, everybody.